Hello, welcome back to the channel. So today we will be talking about what is cloud computing and why is it so important. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Zia. I'm a software engineer at Twitter and I talk about software engineering, tech interviews and technologies in general on this channel. So recently there has been a rise in, you know, the term cloud, right? It's not just cloud that you see around in, in the sky, but there's something a little bit more than that. So cloud computing is this terminology of a new rise, I'd say, in technology where we are moving away from having local machines. So for example, like a CPU that's situated in your car garage and moving all of that into the cloud. So let's start off by talking about, let's, let's give an analogy here for what, for what cloud computing actually is. So imagine traditionally that you have a CPU or a, or a computer that you use to store your media files, your audio, your videos, and you just kind of keep that in the back of your garage, for example, right? So whenever you need to access that information, what you would do is you would log onto your local computer, you would walk into your garage, log onto your computer, and then get the information that you need from your computer. Now, that is what we call on-prem or or local computer. So what is the problem with that? The problem there is that imagine that you're traveling or if, God forbid, a fire catches on uh, in your garage, right? And everything gets ruined. What happens then? Unless you're lucky enough and smart enough to keep backups, then you that probably means you've just lost all the data, all the information that you probably can't retrieve anywhere else. More than just the loss of a physical computer, you've also lost all that time, effort, um, intellectual property that you can put into your work. Now, that's one problem. Another problem is assume that you have to travel and right now you're working in Seattle, for example, and tomorrow you might need to work in China. So when you travel to China, a typical way of carrying that information with you is that you would probably have like a flash drive or a USB drive, as we will call it, kind of plug that into your computer, download everything into that flash drive, and then carry that with you to China and plug it into another computer over there in order to transfer information from one place to another. Uh, the problem there is, as you can imagine, if during that flight your USB drive gets ruined or damaged or lost, um, then you kind of struggle with having no way of getting that data um, across. Right. And also, if you have to transfer tons and tons of data, for example, terabytes of data and flash drives, flash, flash drives typically go from like 32 to you know, 64, maybe 128 gigabytes. That means you probably have to carry like tens of them just, just to kind of transfer data around. So that's not really a very scalable solution. Those are some of the problems with what we had before cloud computing came around. Cloud computing essentially now is you're kind of moving away from this ownership model, right? Where you kind of own the computers locally. Now you're just leasing computers from big companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, for example. So the idea here is that companies like Google, Amazon, they've built server farms, right? Huge data, or huge data centers where they have tons and tons of computers running there, um, but it's not fully utilized all the time. So instead of just kind of having that uh, one-time cost for them to build that and maintain, they decided, hey, let's kind of lease that out to other companies that might probably want to use the computing power, but don't necessarily want to pay for that cost upfront. Okay? So that model has given rise to this cloud computing where as a startup, for example, if I'm a startup today, or if I'm a small mid-sized company where I don't want to pay upfront all that cost to set up the data centers, uh, maintain the farms, you know, the server farms and stuff like that. So now I can just lease from companies like Amazon, where instead of paying for my servers, I can pay them for hours of usage. For example, if I only know that I need to use a server for 12 hours of that 24, um, I, can, I can pay for just those 12 hours. So it's a pay as you go kind of model. Okay, so that's a little bit of history of what cloud computing and how it kind of came about. So let's talk a little bit about what sort of businesses have come up as a result of that, right? So at a higher level for cloud computing, there are two different types of cloud, if you may. There's public cloud and private cloud. And I'll go a little bit into in what the differences are between them. So the public cloud is just what I kind of described earlier, where everyone like Amazon AWS, for example, where they kind of lease out, right? They allow people to lease from them computing power. Uh, so that is what we call public cloud, where uh, tasks or remote tasks can be run remotely on the internet. Instead of running, so by comparison, instead of running that on your local computer, you can now just run remote tasks over the internet. 
anytime, anywhere you want, as long as there's internet connectivity. So this is what we call on-demand compute, right? Or because instead of buying computers that you have to maintain, hiring teams to maintain them, and also planning for uh, downtimes and stuff like that, you can rely on companies that offer this public cloud for all that task, right? Essentially, they've kind of built this uh, service or a product where they're saying, hey, if you pay me X number of dollars per hour, I will provide you a guarantee that we can render you this service. So that could be storage, right? Like S3, Amazon S3, where you can store things on there. That could be compute power, right? For example, Amazon EC2 instances, right? Those are servers, compute power. Um, you can also have a lot of different things out there like AI as a service um, and a bunch of different other services that Amazon, for example, offers today. So we've talked a little bit about what cloud computing is. Now let's talk about why it's important. Okay. So cloud computing is this major shift in the way businesses are being run. You can think of it in, in terms of instead of owning right, things that are not core of your business, okay, instead now you can reduce your costs by leasing as much as you need only, right? That's all you pay. Because if you think of it, previously, the last model of, of this business is that you would have to invest an upfront significant sum, if I may, to build data centers, to build your servers, right? And you have to kind of plan out ahead in case of downtimes, in, in case of um, scale, okay? So a more concrete example here is, for example, imagine that you had to host a YouTube video, okay, on your local computer. Now, for example, let's say that it goes viral overnight, okay? You're getting, instead of 10 views per day, you're getting 100,000 views per day or a million view, views per day. What that happens is your computer, now you need to scale that up, right? In order to support all that traffic that's coming in. As a business owner, you have to think ahead, okay, what is the expected spike in scale that I need in order to maintain that and support all this new traffic that's coming in? That's a lot of overhead, right? As a business owner, you want to focus on what's most important to your business, which is content, for example, in this case. So previously, if you wanted to build that, you would have to put a lot of upfront investment. Now, with this cloud computing model where you can pay as you need, that has changed the game tremendously because now instead of having to put a lot of thinking and money and resources behind building your own, you can now just you know, lease as much as you need. And if there's an increase in traffic, for example, if you need to scale your business, you can do that with a click of a button, essentially, right? Um, Amazon, for example, allows you to scale up or scale down your services according to needs. So for example, if your YouTube video, instead of get, just getting 10 views per day, it has suddenly got, gotten a million views per day, you can just, on a slider, just decide how many instances do you need to support this new traffic. And that is extremely powerful because now businesses can be more nimble, more agile in adapting to the changes in the market. That has allowed businesses now to focus their resources on things that are more critical to running their business, which is you know content or you know HR, you know all the different things that are that they that form the core uh, competency of that business itself. That said, the, with the rise of cloud computing, there there are a few businesses that popped up because of this new model. As an example of that, now we have something called software as a service. What does that mean? Previously, a good example here is if you have if you have used Photoshop in the past. Previously, in order to use Photoshop, you would have to pay a one-time license fee, download the app, and then install it on your computer, run that, and then if you need to upgrade in the future, they will sell you another one, like a, an upgraded model, for example, where you have to pay another licensing fee, download, and kind of do the same thing over and over again. Now, however, Adobe Photoshop has moved away from that licensing model into a subscription model. And that is extremely impactful because that has changed the way basically how they run their business. Instead of having this massive change in this one rollout in the past, right, where that's more prone to having bugs. And the rollout times to fix those bugs are much longer because the fixes have to kind of go through this entire process and then get packaged up and then send to the customers as the result in maybe like one small like plugin or patch, right? But with this new subscription model where they're called software as a service, instead of paying those licensing fees, you're paying them a fixed amount every single month in order to use their software. 
So that is very much in line with this cloud computing idea because now instead of having that you know physical copy of that disk, you can just subscribe to Adobe Photoshop today and keep using it every single month until you decide, hey, I don't need that anymore. Okay, so instead of paying maybe $500 upfront for the licensing fee, now you're just paying maybe, I don't know, $50 per month. Okay, so instead of, so now you can pay $50 a month and you can get access to all the powerful functionalities of Adobe Photoshop. So that has reduced your upfront investment for a small business and allowed you to still leverage all the capabilities that previously had been only available to people who had the money to put down that huge sum for their services. So that has in a way flattened the global playing field because now everyone sort of have, have the capability to access software that previously were only available to people who could afford them. Okay? So some examples of software as a service, Google G Suite, right? If you've used that before, Google has a whole suite of services that they render to um, organizations, companies, um, where everything's kind of tied together, where they have like Google Gmail, tied together, spreadsheet, um, Google Drive, for example, where they have a more storage. That's one example. And Microsoft, Microsoft Office 365 is another example of uh, software as a service. So those are kind of two examples of what software as a service looks like. Another example of cloud computing here is infrastructure as a service. What does infrastructure as a service mean? An example of that is instead of having compute power or storage on your local premise, you can lease those out from Amazon or Google. So they offer you that capability. You can pay them per use for the infrastructure, either to store things on there or to download things, or even just to kind of have your servers running on Amazon's platform. And so you pay them based on actual use, which is what you, which is what I mentioned earlier, pay as you go. Some examples of that are Google Cloud Platform, Amazon S3, Amazon AWS EC2, for example. Those are some examples of infrastructure as a service. Another example here is platform as a service. What that means is there are some companies that have packaged together all the different services that might be needed for you to run your tech business. Some examples of that are your hosting needs, deployment, testing, monitoring, logging. They've kind of packaged all of those services together and call it a platform. And they render that service to you in the form of maybe like a subscription or maybe a pay as you go. So you essentially, instead of having kind of pick and choose different things that you need to build your tech business, Platform as a service typically is more geared towards helping developers build products much more quickly. Examples of companies that do that are Heroku, right? Heroku is a company that um, they've packaged together all these different services into one single place and you can build, for example, a Node.js application um, and then deploy that to Heroku and Heroku will take care of all the other things, see con continuous integration, continuous deployment, monitoring, logging, all of those things that are related to building a product, they will take care, take care of that for you and all you have to pay them is just a monthly uh, a, a, a fee. Now you might have observed there's a trend there, right? X, A-A-S, right? Essentially different types of things as a service. You might have heard things like cars as a service or cooking as a service. As you can see, those are examples of how cloud computing has come around to change the way that we do business. And you can see that happening all around us every single day. And I expect this trend to continue to progress in that manner. There might be identity as a service in the future where potentially instead of having in the US a social security card, you might have a company that is responsible for handling all of those things for you ensuring the security of your identity, ensuring that um, it doesn't get leaked, it doesn't get hacked, all those different things and package that as a service and you have to pay them a monthly fee in order to retain that identity. Now, it might sound crazy for now, but I definitely see that as a possibility moving forward where people care more about their um, online identity security. All right, that's it for today. Hopefully you find that content useful. If you enjoyed that, please leave a comment below on what else you would like to see on this channel. If you like that video, hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.